and you know, um, a point of reference for any translator. I don't think he needs further introduction. So with this, I'll give the floor to Pablo Muñoz, who's going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> 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 Integrating real projects into the field is very well. It's a video game localization courses and innovative and non technical good way to teach video game localization. Thank you, Pablo. Well, thank you very much, Carmen, for your time. Work. And of course, thank you very much to all of you for being here again. So well, let's get started. Um, the first thing I would like to, to ask is, well, many have been answered yet, but I wasn't here. Is are there any courses on video game localization in Spain? Well, at least in my opinion, there are not so many. But the good news is that they are very good. <laughs> <laughs> For example, uh, <laughs> 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 I want to put course on video game localization. Uh, <laughs> so that also is very good. So well, that's good news. So then what? If everything is good, why try to innovate? Uh, well, because I think that the situation is good. Okay now? Yeah, okay, sorry, sorry about that. So okay, why innovation in video game for extension? Uh, uh, uh well because I think that there's always room for improvement, not only in innovation but in any other case of course. Uh, well in that regard, I was very complete and met my expectations. Um, that's why I will, that's why I will, yeah, uh, use this course as a model of a uh, good localization, good localization, video game localization course. Uh, first of all, uh, we uh, learned about video games and the different platforms because um, the master's uh, degree. Uh, not all the people who were involved in that are right. very, very familiar with the video games. That's why I think it was very important to um, spend some time to learning about video games. Uh, we, of course, started the video game localization process. Uh, we saw the different stages of uh, first we the, uh, we play the game, or first we, on our own, that I'm a bit nervous. And then we with the plate, uh, we also saw the differences in the in-house and outsource range model. Uh, well, we also the plate is some dialogues in what it's part and well if you have ever played an RPG, you always find the bias of some bias that feels like a bias. It's incredible. So I think it was very important for us to, to be very creative in that exercise. Um, yeah, because we have to deal with the situation of new models, fans, and what it was very, very good. <laughs> uh, we also submitted the, the menus and commands that are very uh, common in many video games right now. Uh, in that case, in this case, we just did a Final Fantasy X uh, element in the interface. We also practiced something that I have never seen in any other, in any other course, which was, uh, which is characterization. Because, you know, in a video game, not all the characters speak, speak the, the same way. So I think this is very important. We used uh, Animal Crossing in, in an exercise, and uh, well, it was, um, again, a very good uh, exercise. I think we all learned quite a lot in that, doing that exercise, and we had fun. <laughs> And of course, we did something that is uh, in video game localization is very important. We did exercise with virus and tags because maybe you hear about uh, translating video games and you think, okay, it's just about uh, being creative and stuff. But, well, mm, for example, in a video game like Animal Crossing, there are many, many variables and tags, and like it or not, you have to deal with this. So it's very important to be, you know, uh, to know how to deal with. And finally, we learned how to report a bug. A bug 
time because we are tend to be those mentors, but we also uh, tend to when working as a testers, especially at the beginning. I, I think that it's very important to know how to report a bug properly so that the developer can fix the bug. And what something I haven't seen in any other course, but it's very important for uh, a video game collection course. But, okay, everything much was great, but it means that I missed something. I missed something in that, in that course. I mean, I mean, any other course, of course. <laughs> because uh, when you don't play a video game, the best moment is not when you just make a uh, video game or something in the text or when you review it. Because for me, the best moment is, so, sorry, is when you see your text on the screen. Which <laughs> <laughs> is something I know that is not very uh, common, sadly, in the localization, in the video game localization industry, but well, I think it's for me it was a great moment. <laughs> uh, because, for example, when I localized uh, this game, Silentium, for the Nintendo DS, it was my first project in, in Nintendo. Okay, first it was good. I mean, I was able to play the game. Um, yeah, that was good. It was interesting when I saw that one. It's good. But <laughs> the best moment of this meeting was when after translating the text and well, having the text review, I saw my own text on the screen. It was wonderful. It was wonderful and well, I felt. Believe me, I wish I had my mother there. I said, Mom, why don't you do it? So, that's why I started to think about uh, how, how uh, video game localization could be uh, improved. Uh, I mean, in the, the teaching of video game localization. And then I think, I thought that. Okay, ROM hacking, which is a technique or method to uh, to modify uh, some old video games by using emulators and some technical stuff. Uh, by using ROM hacking, we can try to translate uh, video games as well. For example, uh, well, here we have the original screen of the Lane of Theta for the Game Boy, a very old game. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, some fans actually made this. <laughs> this is not Photoshop, believe me. So, this is something real. <laughs> so, that's why, yeah, okay. I have published a handbook on Bro Hacking in Spanish, published it some years ago. And I also managed to publish uh, some academic papers on Bro Hacking uh, in a yeah, in journal, like Palmatica. Uh, well, uh, this was in the final, but I have also published some papers in, in English. Um, well, I discussed the legal issues, how the process is, and stuff. Uh, but I didn't say anything about uh, using one uh, for teaching video uh, game localization. So then, yeah, that's why I started thinking again. And I said, aha! I got it! <laughs> why don't we use strong hacking? localized video games in class because that way the students will be very very happy after seeing the translation on the screen like I was and consequently the students will be more motivated which is something I think that's extremely important in any translation class I think. So I said okay, bringing wrong hacking to class will be and because we have these tools, we have this graphical editor, the excellent editor, well, many, many tools, I would say. Uh, but then, I realized that there was something wrong. Because if I, and now I'm talking about these tools, and they are seeing some faces, probably you would say something like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? These tools are very complex. People don't use these tools. Teachers don't like to, to learn this kind of tools to, uh, to, uh, to introduce wrong hacking in classes. They are very complex, as, as I said. So then what? Well, okay, I have a wonderful idea, but then mm, if nobody but else use it, mm, there's no point in, 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 in going something like this. So then I said, okay, I have started thinking again. Don't worry, don't worry. I have your solution, I call. 
<laughs> we can use some new CPU editors for a specific game to localize uh, all video games without using mm, any technical uh, uh, software. Like we have the software uh, for Final Fantasy III, which I will show you in just a couple of seconds. Or this one for the Lane of Zelda, which you just need to open the file and look for the text you want to translate and that's it. You save it and that's it. So well, let me prove this to you with something great. <laughs> so we're going to see Let's see if it works. So first of all, I will uh, run the, the video game in English so that you see that I haven't prepared anything. Uh, okay, so. To dial up some phone, we have to see, we can hear all the text of the game. And you believe me, there are a lot of <laughs> words to translate. Um, and as you can see, it's more or less on the. Uh, so, for example, here we can see some tasks uh, in addition. So, for example, uh, yeah, could you please put Hola Mundo? No explanation mark, it's not anything. I have to say. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So, <laughs> let me go and click on by this, and then we save the file. Now let's see. Now we have changed. Uh, we go to the inventory again. We load the file, and I really hope it's. Okay, so that's it. It's something real. No. <laughs> You can do it. Yeah, okay. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> 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 so, well, this was just an idea of a course that more things to consider, like how we are going to implement this in class or how we will we'll, uh, evaluate the students. But, well, I'm planning to write uh, my master uh, dissertation about this topic. <coughs> I have time to tackle with this. So, I'm sorry, this is getting longer. I'm trying to be very brief. And don't worry, because in life, uh, there are also many game over moments, but there are all Mr. Coin points. If you have any questions, you just can ask me.